I'm not going to speak about what is objectively smart. I'm just wondering what smart is, and that's the reason why they, they wanted me to start this uh, conference. I'm sure this is only uh, really a, a beginning of uh, thinking about uh, the concept of smart. And uh, what I did was to take a look at Google Trends. In Google Trends, um, you see that uh, the word smart is more and more searched. Uh, the first time that there is a peak in the uh, trend is uh, 2008. In 2008, the word smart used by uh, Obama in the campaign, and he talks about uh, digital smart grid. And uh, that was a buzzword for his campaign all, of, all, all during the, the 2008. And you see in Google trends uh, a uh, uh, growing interest in searching this word. The other thing is that at the end of that year, Sam Palmisano, the head of uh, IBM, uh, starts the campaign that they call smarter planet. So smart becomes uh, a PR word. We are talking about a word that is uh, used by PR. And as always happens, uh, after some time, a PR campaign goes down again. And uh, it's only in 2011 that the growth in Google Trends starts again. And that's because uh, Elizabeth Smart is, uh, Smart is uh, uh, kidnapped and raped. And it's a story that goes all over the States. And so Smart becomes, again, a word that they search. Um, but after that, it doesn't stop. It grows. Uh, it seems like a 33% of improvement in searches in the word smart that is no more only a campaign, a PR campaign is no more only a story about uh, a woman that is raped, becomes a word that is inside our lives, uh, as in uh, uh, smart grid, smart city, smartphone, of course, but there are also strange things like smart weapons that make me think a lot. And uh, there is something that is like an oxymoron. There is a newsletter called Smart Italy. That is very strange. Um, what does it mean, smart? In English, you know it's, uh, it's uh, clearly a, a very diverse word. It's about clever, it's quick, it's witty, it's impertinent, it's fashionable. And uh, in computing, it seems that uh, is linked to an idea of a computer that is uh, as smart as a human being. Um, this, of course, uh, has um, a history. Uh, you know that the first guy that started talking about the bits is Claude Shannon in uh, 1948. Just two years later, Alan Turing is talking about his test, his famous test about uh, how to uh, assess if, uh, if a computer is intelligent. And he says that uh, in uh, easily that uh, uh, a computer is intelligent if you cannot detect if it is a human or a computer. So it seems like the smartness of a computer is uh, the idea that it uh, seems like a human being. Um, but uh, at the same time, uh, they are thinking another way uh, and in Italy, Giuseppe Ungaretti, a poet uh, that uh, started his career as a futurist, 
and then we came some sort of uh, worried about the future. After the World War II, he writes in 1953 about computers. And it's a strange thing, a poet like him uh, talking about computers and he, speak, and he writes in, uh, in, a, uh, uh, in a review that is called uh, uh, La Civiltà delle Macchine, the machine civilization, um, what he thinks will happen. And he thinks that computers uh, that he calls electronic machines will grow in smartness uh, faster than human imagination. And this leads him to be very worried because when machine outsmart in terms of imagination humans uh, or at least outsmart humans and their imagination then um, humans will start thinking as computers. Um, you know there is a lot of talking now about that kind of uh, debate. Um, so we are in between two lines of thought. The first is uh, saying that computers will think as humans. The other line is humans will think as computers. What is smart in this domain? Uh, of course, uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, studies about this. You know Nicholas Carr, famous uh, article that uh, was titled Google makes, uh, makes you stupid. Uh, but at the same time, Gary Small, a neuroscientist in UCLA, uh, did this, an experiment and uh, showed that uh, the brain's activity in somebody that uses a lot Google and the internet is much more lively and uh, it uh, is more likely to uh, do advanced de decision making and the complex reasoning. It seems that we can come to a uh, conclusion now after 60 years then the debate is started that um, computers change our brain. Uh, we have started to in, uh, develop a new strategy for memorizing things because we don't need anymore to memorize the single facts but we need to memorize how to find facts. And the second thing is that they help us elaborate the reason uh, and uh, improve our, uh, another part of our brains. Um, so uh, computers are a sort of uh, uh, aid in, in our brain's um, uh, activities that are memorization, uh, reasoning and connecting. Um, so if we uh, are asking ourselves uh, if uh, a computer makes smarter people, uh, then uh, we have no answer. We, we need just to understand and know what's happening. And that's our only uh, strategy. If we let computers outgrow our Im imagination, then we are dumber. If we know them, if we know computers, then we are more interesting and, and, and maybe smart. Um, of course, there is a, a very big discussion about the last part of uh, the sequence that I just mentioned, memorization, reasoning and connecting. Uh, computers help us to, in connecting uh, in a way that uh, was not possible before. Um, and so we developed this concept of collective intelligence. Is collective intelligence better than individual intelligence? 
That's a big question. Of course, again, I'm, I'm opening questions more than uh, answering. Uh, if I take a look at, uh, uh, again, uh, the, 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 the bad things that happen in the world, and uh, I see that some of them are collective, uh, some of them are, are, are individual. Uh, the only thing that we know uh, is that um, there are collective uh, problems that only a, a very general uh, collective intelligence can deal with, like climate change. I guess that this is uh, a way to think about this, uh, this, this problem. Um, so smart is always better. Uh, in terms of knowledge, I would say that smart is being able to say you're wrong. Smart is efficient. Uh, well, I'd say that uh, to have a smart solution, you need a smart problem. Uh, efficient is not enough to say that something is smart. Uh, Hitler seemed to be very efficient, but I, don't, I wouldn't say that he was smart. Uh, of course, there are other ways to look at efficiency, like in cars. If they use less resources, they are, then they are smart. But there is something more to that. Uh, maybe we are developing uh, an idea of uh, smartness that is linked more to sustainable. So it seems to be smart, something that is uh, at the same time able to be efficiently solving some smart problems, but also to have a long durée, to, to last uh, for a long time. Uh, a new thing is not always an innovation. Uh, a, an innovation has long, con long uh, consequences. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, long term, the major thing that we think about is uh, the environment and sustainability. One more thing about sustainability is that um, in a system, it also uh, has another special feature. It is open for more improvement, so that we are not thinking about a smart solution as a sort of ending to a problem, but is something that makes, creates a possibilities to have uh, to deal with new problems and new solutions in a completely open uh, process. Uh, and so SMART is something that is open for improvement in, a, in an impertinent way because it needs to be also sometimes uh, uh, not only an improvement but a real revolution. Um, so, to have a general idea uh, what we discussed here at, uh, at State of the Net was how do we subjectively uh, define smart, what is smart uh, in digital uh, needs to have analog consequences. Um, we are not going to uh, think of smart digital uh, 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 as something that solves digital problems. We are going to think about digital as smart in terms of analog consequences, uh, in terms, as I said, in environment, in terms of uh, our life. What can we elaborate on, on that? Um, of course, a good uh, idea to uh, 
evaluate something smart could be that uh, makes somebody angry because it changes things. Uh, the Uber saga is there to make an example of that. Uh, of course, uh, that is not enough because many other things make us angry and they are not smart. Uh, one very important thing that we can understand is that uh, our analog uh, life is uh, uh, le uh, lived in uh, um, a system that is set by time and space. Time and space are analog and they are um, the environment in which we live. They are the most uh, interesting uh, point of view to understand what is scarce. Scarcity uh, of time has become one of the major scarcities that we need to address and uh, the digital solutions, the digital uh, ideas that uh, we develop uh, can have uh, the smart adjective if they improve our uh, use of time. Uh, at the same time, space has become large. You know, the change has been uh, really radical. We used to live in a world in which we had a long time before us and we lived in a small space. Now we live in a very big space with small time to, uh, to be used. Uh, so this is really the analog uh, domain in which we can understand if a digital solution is smart, if it uh, helps us deal with the short time and it gives us a compass to live in a very, very big world. Uh, another thing that uh, is linked to the idea of smart is the capability uh, to improve what we know about things. Um, that means access, but that means also a different approach to big data and to facts that we register while we live and develop uh, digital uh, solutions. Big data for all, not only for NSA, Google, and Facebook. Um, it's smart something that is digital and it helps innovate without asking permission. It's impertinent. Smart is, uh, is impertinent. So we don't ask permission to innovate. That means that it's smart something that it has net neutrality. There is no uh, possibility to have the same amount of in innovation, experimentation uh, with uh, impertinence uh, if we don't have net neutrality. Uh, it is smart something that at the same time uh, serves the collective part of our life and the uh, individual part of our life. So it respects an equilibrium between individual freedom and collective intelligence. Uh, that means that privacy is not something that is gone away, uh, but is a right that we need to redefine and uh, defend. Um, it helps collaboration um, and relationships, a smart digital thing, in a civic context, not only social. Social solutions make us live together with other people that are similar to us. Uh, but we need also to live together with people that we don't like. Um, that means to develop solutions that deal with the concept of civic life. Some kind of methodology to deal with people that we don't like. To achieve all this, uh, digital smart needs to uh, be led by humans that understand machines but don't think like machines. 
And uh, until now, uh, as we can see, uh, the only really smart digital thing that was ever made is the internet that has all the features that I mentioned. All the rest is interpretation. Thank you.